imagine, if you will, just for a second, saving your money, putting your money away, you know, investing it the right way, or just, you know, working your butt off and then finally an opportunity comes around and, of course, you choose to uh, buy a home. You buy a home, not just for you, but maybe potentially your wife, significant other, whatever. doesn't really matter. And, of course, the rule goes for even those who don't want to marry the opposite sex. I just figure I'd put that out there to be saying it because, obviously, everybody in this country has a right to own a home, especially if you can pay for it. But I want you to imagine living in a state or living in an area that has these things, these people who, if you don't enter a house within a certain amount of time or if you don't get there right away, even though you've bought and paid for it, I want you to imagine these people just kind of like just moving in and taking your stuff. And then somehow or another, the state and local government sides with them over you while they occupy the space that you paid for. We call those people squatters, and it's obviously a problem. And it becomes a nightmare, a total nightmare. Buying a dream home turned into a nightmare. You heard him for this family from Queens. The house came with something the new owners did not bargain for, a squatter. More than four months after purchasing that home, the family says they still can't go inside. And they've faced roadblock after roadblock trying to get the man who is staying there out. Investigative reporter Dan Crow joins us now with more. Sandra, the family says they've had no choice but to take the man living inside their home to court. And despite having hearing after hearing, they still haven't been able to move Guys, in. Before we get to the story, I want you to know right now, there's a reason why this video is as long as it is. It's because it's actually three separate stories. They all have to do with the same thing. This one right here was the first one that popped up. The second one I'm going to be talking about is probably the one that's going to give you guys the most amount of, let's just say, Let's just say that the second story is probably going to make you extremely angry, where the first story is obviously the heartbreaking one. And, of course, the third story is the oldest story. But the reason why I'm putting it towards the end is because, in reality, it's probably the story that we should have first taken notice of. But there are other YouTube content creators out there who have actually pointed this out. But for whatever reason, their videos never went viral. However, the squatter problem is absolutely insane. In some cases, these people have got a lot more rights than the said landlords or the people who actually own the property. Now, why I said landlords is because, well, in a lot of cases, these people do, in fact, have more rights over the people who rent out the property. This right here, by the way, was not a case of that happening. This right was the case of somebody buying a piece of property, buying a home for said son who has Down syndrome. Now, I want you to imagine for a second, not only, say, if it's your son or your daughter or whatever has Down syndrome, but I want you to imagine something like, say, cerebral palsy, or maybe you've got a child, or maybe you've got a young one in the family who's got multiple sclerosis. Maybe somebody's got ALS. you got to take care of them. But obviously, these squatters, who really, quite frankly, are pretty daggone low-life individuals, they honestly don't care about that. They just want to jump inside your home while you're in the process of trying to move there or before you've actually moved in or before you even start to move in there. And they want to just go ahead and take your property out from under you. And by the way, they use the actual laws to get away with this. There's even been people out there who've posted videos online. This is one of the reasons why it is. I'm going to be leaving this video right here from Actual Justice where in the comment section because I hope you guys go check it out because he knows a lot more about the law itself. I'm here to explain to you what's probably going to happen as a result of it. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. But of course, these people go online, they post videos on how it is that they do, in fact, get away with this type of crap. You work your entire life, you pay for a piece of property or a house, especially in a state like, say, New York, where it's already extremely expensive to live there. It's also a state that, by the way, is about to experience a lot more hardship, given the fact that a lot of investors are going to be leaving the city, and not to mention the fact you've got the migrant crisis, same thing in California, same thing in Oregon. Don't worry that way. They'll be coming up in video number two because we got to talk about the end game of what's probably going to happen to this topic here in video number two, which will be out tomorrow as well. The thing is this right here. You buy this piece of property, you buy this home, and somebody decides to just go ahead and just swoop right on in and start staying there, and they use the squatter's rights to get away with stalling the process of you getting inside the house, which, by the way, will ultimately cost you a lot more money. And the squatter in this case here obviously really and truly did not care. It was very, very heartless because uh, let's just go ahead and say that this family's story is uh, pretty daggone heartbreaking when you actually look at it. It has just taken over, over everything, everything. Susanna and Joseph Landa bought what they thought was their dream retirement home in Douglaston, Queens. We're looking to hopefully retire and most of all provide for my son, Alex, who has Down syndrome. He has a 
a disability. The new house is right next door to family members. I just want to know that I can die tomorrow when he's next to his brother. They signed the deed back in October. And then what happens? The nightmare begins. The house came with something unexpected. A man living in their home, who they say refuses to leave. We couldn't believe it. We could not believe it. His name's Brett Flores. They cannot come here early when I'm not here. They have keys, they're the owner. This is what happened when the Landis tried to enter with an insurance inspector. They say Flores called the cops on them, even though they say they gave him 10 day notice. I didn't say this earlier, but of course it's gonna come back up a little bit later on the video. These squatters, their rights for the most part, don't start kicking in until after 30 days. What they're doing is they're taking advantage of somebody's inability to move, okay? That right there is what they're doing. Let's say that a family actually wills you a house. Let's say you live, like, say, in my home state of North Carolina. Obviously, I'm wearing the Duke gear because we won the other night. Let's say that that there, the case, you're living out here in North Carolina. Your parents live, say, in New York or Massachusetts or maybe even New Hampshire, Maine, wherever, or it could be California, and, of course, you can't get over there. You can't move or whatnot, and these squatters are already there. Well, typically, if nobody's living in the home over the course of those 30 days, unless there's actual neighbors, and that's something else, too, that really bothers me here, is because there are neighbors in each one of these circumstances that could have said something or possibly gone over there and told said squatter, you need to leave. Could have maybe, I don't know, maybe given them a heads up or whatnot. Like I said before, a lot of apathy, a lot of indifference uh, going on here where people just simply don't care about their fellow man or their neighbor. I mean... Come on, man. I mean, good neighbors are good neighbors, but what happens when you get bad neighbors or neighbors that don't care about you? It's a lack of like. It's a lack of feeling for your fellow man, especially given the fact that your fellow man has bought this home, but yet somebody else just swooped right on in there knowing that all they have to do is just simply hold out for a short period of time, and then next thing you know, they're after those 30 days, their rights officially begin to kick in, and now it suddenly becomes a landlord-tenant dispute. I mean, just, just think about that. Oh. Before I continue on, I want to go ahead and tell you right now that this topic will, in fact, be coming up in video number two. So if you do see some of the same stuff that I showed you, trust me, it will be in video number two as well, because obviously there is an end game to this entire situation or something is eventually going to happen. It's the reason why it is I've decided to put two videos in the description box, because people are beginning to take notice of the situation and they are, in fact, getting fed up with it. And of course, there is also the possibility of squatters getting squatted by other squatters which just makes the situation 10 times more confusing than normal. This family bought this home for their son. So that way he could be closer to other family. Not every single family can help the situation that they're in. Uh, look, I'm not saying this under any circumstances to poke fun of anybody or make fun of any households or any families who've got children with special needs or anything. Look, I'm a guy who studied recreational therapy, and obviously I've been around people who use certain types of therapies, like say paint therapy, music therapy, things like that, to help cope with what's going on in the world. So I understand exactly where somebody may be coming from if they have a child with special needs. A lot of people out there are 100% absolutely heartless. This guy right here decided to squat in on these people's homes obviously showed you that he wasn't exactly what we call a human being of high moral value. A lot of these people are opportunists. They decide to take over the situation. They don't care about the law. And then they use said laws of these very, very blue areas to leverage themselves in the case to stay in these places much, 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 much longer than they should. Now, before I get to the end of this particular segment, I want to go ahead and say this right quick. The family at this moment in time is being held up through the legal process. The state of New York and the area that they live in, they are going out of their way to protect the squatter in this case rather than the actual family itself. But of course, it gets a lot worse when you get to story number two. The thing you got to understand is that not only do these people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get this home, from what I understand, it actually may have been closer to a million when you factor in the taxes and everything, the amount of money that they're paying, you're also now being forced to pay the legal fees to go through the process to get this guy removed, which makes you wonder if something's going to start happening here in the future. But don't worry, we'll get to that soon. But let's watch the rest of this story because obviously this is a heartbreaking tale and obviously the people who do these types of crimes obviously are not thinking about the people that they are in fact actually hurting, which goes to show you exactly why it is that we have a lot of indifference in our society and of course apathy is beginning to set in. Wasn't a renter. Never. You didn't sign documents that said we have a tenant. Correct. Court documents detail in Flores' own words why he's there. A signed statement says he was hired by the former homeowner as his caretaker, was paid $3,000 a week, and his employment ended in January of last year when the man died. He claims he has a license to stay in the house from the previous owner. What a lot of people don't realize is in New York, 
squatters have rights after 30 days. 30 days. How can you have rights if you have no lease, you're not paying rent, so what is your right? Not only has Flores been living there, they claim he listed the home online to rent rooms to other people. The only way to try and get him out, they're taking him to landlord tenant court. Five hearings at civil court. He shows up, no, no attorney. If it's not one excuse, is another excuse. He filed the bankruptcy. So that prevents everything from going forward. Meanwhile, they've been paying all the bills. Leaving wow. windows wide open 24 hours. Including thousands of dollars in utilities. It makes me feel completely forgotten in the legal system. Not able to do anything. As for Flores, no one answered the door. He did answer the phone. I'm doing my best to try to get your side of the story, so you're telling me to call your attorney? An attorney who told me? You're gonna settle it through the court system. No comment. Our system is broken. We have no rights. We have no rights at all. Nothing, nothing, zero. And this issue may not be resolved anytime soon. I mentioned legal bills earlier. What I didn't mention was the actual light bill. You see, these people are also on the hook for the light bill too, not to mention the fact this SOB is renting the place out of the people posted on Zulu, on Zillow, all that type of crap there. And of course, as you guys can see, the people the people who own this property are now being screwed over. I mean, it's bad enough that the squatters take your home, but now they're obviously running the air conditioning at full blast or running the heat at full blast. They're offering more people to come stay in there so that way they can then make money themselves, make money off of your tragedy, a home that, quite frankly, they stole, which, of course, he wouldn't be there forever, but still, the amount of money that is being, and I mean this, the amount of money that's being spent. Also, something else, too, the child that she's trying to get closer to the, uh, the child's brother, Let's say he was somebody who had cerebral palsy. Let's say he had ALS. Let's say he had uh, MS. Let's say he had any type of debilitating disease that could eventually kill him. Some type of progressive disease that I, or regenerative degree that actually hurt somebody further. You're talking about a child lost, and you're talking about a lot of efforts for practically nothing, even though it's therefore yours. These people are cold. They are heartless. And obviously, these are hair scumbags. But what happens when you get a situation where you have a person who buys a home, or let's just say the person is gifted a home because a relative died, and what happens if the police, what happens if the police, for whatever reason, choose to arrest you for showing up to your place, the place of which that your parents lived at when they died and willed it to you? Or maybe it's a family home. Think about it. Maybe it's a home that's been passed out. Either way, it doesn't matter home was promised to somebody else through legal means. But yet, then the cops turn right back around and they choose to arrest you, which is exactly what happened in this story here. Now, I'm going to let this one right here run a little bit longer before I interject. But pay very, very close attention because obviously, as you watch this, you'll begin to see exactly how it is that these people are, in fact, manipulating the laws and stealing people's homes. Homes that, quite frankly, belong to them. And of course, then turning right back around, staying in said home, and then forcing these people to spend a lot of money to remove them, when, of course, these people obviously are not going anywhere because they're all a bunch of cheapskates. Let's roll this. Yes, you are. You don't even have a How about that? A squatter standoff. A property owner confronts a group of people she says moved into her million-dollar home in Queens, and our cameras were rolling as dozens of officers showed up. Several people were taken away in handcuffs, and one of those arrested may surprise you. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth joins us now with more on what happened. Tell us, Dan. Well, this is a very big growing problem. I received dozens of tips from viewers about this in just the past week. I went to do what I thought was going to be a routine interview. Instead, we capture what police and property owners are dealing with on a daily basis. I have video of you. Who are these people? To understand how this day ended, we need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests. Obviously, see the cops. You guys obviously catch at the very, very end that it's been 30 days, and of course, these people haven't been able to actually move in, and now the squatters' rights have kicked in. It, 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 it makes you wonder exactly, you know, exactly how lenient the law really and truly is, and what these people can get away with. Now, me personally, I think the minute that a house is sold, I think what needs to happen is that. Uh, due to the person who bought the home, due to the fact that they paid for it, due to the fact that it's their home, I think that maybe the locks need to officially be changed, the place needs to be barricaded off, and if somebody's actually staying in that home, the cops need to do the right thing and get that person out of there. But I did mention earlier that right now you've got some of these cases where you've got neighbors who, for whatever reason, don't want to get involved. I mean, you mean to tell me you can't go over there and tell that guy, hey, look, dude, um, 
somebody has already bought this home. You need to get out of here. If they say F off, then maybe you need to be able to call the cops and say, hey, look, you know, it's not even 30 days yet. You know, their rights have not kicked in. They need to be gone. You see, the neighbors could have also helped out in this case. I know somebody's going to get mad at me for pointing that out, but quite frankly, at this point in time, I really truly don't care. I understand this woman did not buy the place. Her parents willed it to her, but still at the same time, the parents willed it to her, so therefore it is her place. But what will the cops do? Well, the cops will come in, they'll side with the squatter, and they'll arrest the lady. Let's go ahead and watch that. How do you say your name? We met Adele and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he loved it. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6 and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work and their job, will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home. And now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? I'm not renting this. Why are you here? She unlocked the front door, saw our cameras, and took off. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. Adele and her daughter, with the property deed in hand, went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. There's a man sleeping right there. Get out of my house. She found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved in about two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmiths. I didn't come in illegally. The door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors and looking for documents. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for more than 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. Changes the locks, breaks back into the place, even though it's not his, and then the cops... And I'm pretty sure you guys will see this here in a second because obviously I've looked at it. I wouldn't be presenting this, uh, this video, this topic to you unless, of course, it did not happen. They eventually choose to arrest the actual homeowner. For two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm not coming out. This house is empty. This is my home. My locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. It's not fair that I, as the homeowner, should be having to go through this. How are you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith showed up, but police gave her a warning before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door. Broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did. And he so did you. Him. You broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police. The guy even, even claimed he was doing work on the home as a way to kind of get out of this because it's one of the loopholes that these people use. But in reality, we probably should have seen this coming a long time ago. You see, nine years ago, there was another incident that happened in New York that was similar to this one that happened in the Bronx. I chose to remove that from the video to keep it from being so long. But still at the same time, though, that incident occurred in the Bronx. Happens all the time in New York. These squatters, they end up getting a lot more rights than the homeowners themselves. I personally think, I already told you exactly how I feel. I think you squatters are complete total scumbags. Look, I understand it's cold outside, whatever you may want to get inside of a place. Maybe you need some shelter. But still, though, these people are not some Aladdins, okay? That's not what the hell is going on here. The left would have you believe that these people are all just a bunch of little Aladdins. Uh, and quite frankly, that they're victims, when in reality, they're not victims at all. They're the actual perpetrators themselves. This guy right here obviously went in there with the sole purpose of then, kind of like the first guy, of using it to get make money. It's not your piece of property. It's not your home. It does not belong to you. Take your scumbag ass on. But like I said before, we probably should have seen this coming a long time ago, which, by the way, has led me to write down to the project, the Californification of the United States, because obviously the situation is big in California. Obviously, the situation is big. And we're speaking of Oregon. Oregon's got this situation now where homeless people can just camp out on your property. You have no property rights anymore, and they've also legalized drugs. But like I said, We'll talk about that there tomorrow, or at least we'll allude to it tomorrow, I mean, with this video here, because obviously there's going to be a follow-up talking about the topic I'm going to get to at the end of the video. But I want you to think about this really quick, just to kind of go through this one more time. You pay for a home for a family member. 
while you're in the process of trying to move, somebody swoops in, takes that property, runs your air conditioning, runs your heat because it hasn't been cut off yet, or maybe they got cut on or whatever, or you already did that and they come in there. They take advantage of the squatter's rights in the state. They stay there beyond 30 days. They run up your light bill. They run up your water bill. They then rent the place out to other people who should not be living there. In some cases, these people, well, actually in a lot of cases, these people get high. They get on heroin trips. They get all jacked up, all screwed up. They tear your place up in the process. And then the cops show up and guess what they do? They then turn right back right and arrest you for making a complaint or arrest you for pointing it out. Or you got somebody who goes in like you saw before who then tries to even change the locks to keep you out of your own home. A home that, quite frankly, your family, your parents gave to you after they died. Fascinating. But, of course, we should have seen this. So let's go back in time. Now, guys, this video right here, this little clip right here is going to have a little bit of a header on top of it. Of course, it came from Inside Edition because they love to copyright people. So there's going to be back and forth headers in and out on this one right here. But I want you guys to pay very, very close attention to what happened in this case. This woman was trying to get inside her own home, but the previous owner refused to leave. Hey, 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 hey. We told you about Tracy Albert and her husband, Miles, harrowing experience two weeks ago. He just said he wasn't leaving. That was it. Wasn't going to leave the house, barricaded himself in the house. Now, after a 14-month battle, the squatter and his family have finally moved out. A neighbor's surveillance camera captured them pulling out of the garage and driving away. We came here as fast as we could the next day um, to get let in, get the locks changed, and saw that he had still left some stuff behind. Furniture. Our cameras were there as movers removed each piece of furniture one by one, ridding the house of anything belonging to the previous owner. Are you nervous that he's going to come here? Yeah. To everyone's surprise, the five-bedroom home is in great condition. When you first walked in here, were you holding your breath thinking, oh my gosh, I hope that the fixtures are there, I hope the stove is there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the walls were here. <laughs> we didn't know yeah. what he was going to do. But the Alberts say the entire ordeal has soured them forever on what was once their dream house. I hate this home now, and that's, I mean, it really does suck, but there's no way that you can, I mean, every time I drive up the street, it's just anxiety. So do you think you'll move in? I, at this point, I can't imagine moving in. Now, eventually, like you, like you saw, they got this guy out of the house. This case actually made national news, but then got buried very, very quickly. Maybe because the state of California views it as an embarrassment. You see, a lot of these laws have been on the books for a very, very long time, but a lot of people don't know about this because they don't even know about squatters. Like I said before, these scumbags come into your home, take advantage of the squatter's laws, then they turn right back around after that, they make money off your property, trash the place, then leave while at the same time tying you up money-wise. And I mean money-wise, I mean you're being forced to pay for a light bill and a water bill. By the way, you're not even living in that house while at the same time paying that lights and water on the property that you're staying in currently because you got to stay there now because you can't go anywhere else. And then you got the legal bills that sometimes may take years. They may pile up for a very long time before you even get in there. And in more times, in more cases than not, you got to make sure the legal bills are paid before you can even move in there. This is one of the reasons why it is that when I find out that um, people eventually walked up to one of those homes and demand these people to leave, that I wanted to bring up this topic. Very, very quickly. That's just I missed the story. Woman in New York, her parents die. She inherits their home and she says, I'm going to sell it. When she shows up to actually check on it, some people have moved in, changed the locks. When she calls the police, the police say to these squatters, can you prove you live here? And when they can't, the police remove the men. The woman then goes to change the locks. But the police say, if you change the locks, we will arrest you. Don't do it. Even though it's her home and those guys have no proof they live there. She changes the locks. It's her house. The cops then come up. The, or before that, this the, this guy breaks back in the house. The cops then show back up and arrest the homeowner for unlawful eviction. The squatters stay and say, take me to court. Next thing that happens is exactly what we warned was going to happen. Some guys show up and they said to the press, look, we, we, we're just going to talk to him. We're going to talk to him. I wonder what they talked about. Because soon after, these guys split. Not all of them. One guy's on camera being like, I don't know who I paid rent to, but I paid rent, so I live here. And he just seems confused. And then that's uh, the guy who wants his deposit back. Right. Leave. They, were, yeah. they, were, they were like, yes, yeah, so you paid the squatters. And he's like, so guys, two of them walked into the house to have a chat with these people. Now, look, this same 
topic is going to come up in video number two, and this is the point that I was trying to get to. After a while, will vigilantes start popping up? Will lynch mobs come back? Chell Sonnen was, and I think I'll include it in the next one, Chell Sonnen, MMA fighter, who's running for governor of Oregon soon. He was recently on the Patrick Bet David podcast, and he was discussing the possibility of sending the uh, the pagans and the Mongols uh, to uh, Portland to take care of their crime problem. Makes you wonder if uh, vigilantes are, in fact, coming back, because you see, after a while, people do get pissed off. And not only do people get pissed off, but people eventually find out that law enforcement has betrayed them. They're now siding with the perpetrator and not the actual victim itself. The people in this case, every single one of these homeowners, they were the actual victim here. And the people who squatted on their homes were, in fact, perpetrators. And, of course, there's always that little video that went viral recently of the guy talking about how they were going to rob all these homes. I'll provide that in the very next video. fact of the matter is that people are, in fact, getting fed up. But once again, though, you guys can see that obviously in these very, very big blue areas, law enforcement obviously fails them. And they obviously choose to go after the victim and not the perpetrator, even though it's obviously the perpetrator is the one who needs to suffer for this. These squatters have got a lot more rights than the landowners themselves, the actual people who own the property, the people who own the houses, and this crap right here has got to stop. I personally think that squatting should be followed up by an immediate prison sentence because guess what? Squatting is pretty much the same as theft. With that right there being said, guys, there's going to be a follow-up tomorrow to this one right here talking about lynch mobs and uh, vigilantes and asking the question if it's going to be on the rise. So expect some of this stuff right to come back up in video number two. Please tell me what you guys think in the comment section. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sign off in the comment section, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>